afternoon and welcome to Zion Community Church Wednesday night Bible study. So glad that you're tuning in with us. And as always, we pray that you've had a great week, a great day, and we pray that God will bless you through this message and through this time that we spend together in God's word. Amen. God is just so good. And it's just an awesome blessing to be alive and be able to share the goodness of the Lord, the good news about Jesus Christ and all that he has for us and how the that our lives can be further enriched by drawing closer to God and understanding the promises that he's laid up for us as children of God. So we're going to, to go in prayer and ask God to come in and bless us tonight. And we ask that you would just receive the blessings of the Lord. Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, thank you for another Wednesday night, a chance to magnify you, a chance to understand your principles, your word, and to draw closer to, to the knowledge of you so that we could be better witnesses and better sharers of the good news of Jesus Christ. We thank you for, for everything that you've done, everything you desire to do, and just for making your presence available for us, just by allowing us to come boldly before the throne of grace. And Father, just being enriched by your presence, knowing that in your presence is the fullness of joy. So God, we, we give you praise, we give you the glory. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our life, our health, and our strength. Thank you for those that are tuning in tonight. Thank you for those needs that they have that you're going to meet through your word and through your power. We thank you, God, that the good news of Jesus Christ is available for all that will receive it. And we thank you, God, that the more we love you and the more we allow your love to permeate through us and in us, we'll walk in the newness of life and we glorify you. Thank you. Thank you, God. We can't praise you enough for the things that you've done and the things that you desire to do. Thank you, God. Thank you for, for making it easy to talk to you and easy to, to worship and praise you. Hallelujah. All the glory, all the honor belongs to you. Have your way tonight. Meet the needs of your people. No matter how great those needs are, allow them to have faith in you, knowing that the just shall live by faith. Thank you, God, that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but you've given us power, love, and a sound mind. No matter how hectic our world may be, how treacherous the, the sins of the world may be, you are a God of peace, and you speak peace into our lives. And your desire for us is for us to have peace and joy. Thank you. Thank you for the fullness of joy that belongs to us in Christ Jesus. So breathe upon this word tonight. Allow revelation and knowledge to flow. Allow prophetic words to minister to the hearts of those who tune in. Send somebody new to just bounce through and maybe they find a word that would encourage them yes. and bless them. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 We um, started teaching, um, and as we like to do a lot of times uh, on Sunday. Um, after Sunday's message, we like to expound upon uh, what was taught on Sunday and take it a little further and maybe go a little deeper in understanding so that it can be applied. One of the things about Zion Community Church is, you know, our desire is that we would make the word of God plain, make it simple so that you can live it. And so that's our goal. And every time we, we dig into God's word, we want to make it so practical that you can apply what you hear to your everyday life. So um, we're gonna get back into this teaching of avoiding toxic relationships by following the shepherd. Um, we started um, looking at seven items of things that we think is necessary and there's more, but seven items that I think would make it clear of how you can avoid or get out of a toxic relationship or not even get into one at the beginning. So if you want to go ahead and share those with us. Point number one, if you're in a relationship, whether it's mother-daughter, mother-father, father-mother, um, siblings, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, no matter what the relationships are, God cares about all of our relationships. So whatever relationships that we're involved in, understand that we don't want to be the toxic person. Yes. In the relationship. So don't be tox toxic. Learn to be a great friend that makes others better around you. And the scripture that we're using is iron sharpens iron. Amen. And so we want people in our lives who are going to make us better. Amen. We want to be in people's lives to make them better. And 
God is pleased when our relationships are like that. When yes. our, our relationships are thriving relationships, not relationships to do harm or, or to be hurtful or to bring others down. But we want to be constantly thinking about building. Amen. You know, we want ourselves build up as well as to build up others. So don't be toxic. And if you know that you have some issues, and we all do, we all have issues. Yes. So if you're aware of the issues that you have, go to God. God is able to help you to fix those issues that you have. And the word of God clearly shows us us. Yes. It's a mirror. And so when we learn how to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will let us know, you know what, you're not treating that person right. Or, you know, you can do this better. Right. And then God will show us how to do and how to be better. And so acknowledging our weaknesses yes. in relationships is the first thing. And remember, don't be toxic yourself. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons, one of the things about one of the escapes from being toxic is to employ, you know, one of the things that God tells us to do, and that's to love. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we miss out on is we we allow ourselves to, to walk away from the love of God. And, you know, temptations are always going to be around us. And the enemy wants us to walk in hate. Um, but God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us power, love, and a sound mind. And so when we walk in the soundness of mind, when we're, when we're allowing the word of God to regulate our thoughts and our actions, we put away childish things. And so life is not about us. It's mm -hmm. about how we can serve others and make them better and how we can, you know, make the world around us better. And if we think about it, that's, that's our purpose is to be, uh, to exemplify the character of the love of God. In fact, one of the things, let's go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verse 8, teaches us to owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. You know, a lot of times people say, tell, talk about, and they get in arguments about keeping the law and the old covenant. But one of the things that the love, the old covenant did is set us up for Jesus to come and bring the new covenant into fulfillment. And he said he didn't come to do away with the law, mm -hmm. but to fulfill it. But here, this scripture is telling us, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Mm -hmm. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. That's it in a nutshell. If we really have that, that agape love that where we're seeking the highest good of another and we're not seeking the highest good of another at, you know, um, and pulling them down, when you're seeking the highest good of another, you're, you're looking for what's best for that person, not just what's best for you. And it takes you out of that selfish realm of being self-satisfying or being selfish in itself to where you're just looking for life to be good to you, no matter how it hurts other people. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at, at this, and it, even when it kind of lays out at this, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery. You know, if you love somebody, you wouldn't make them feel bad. You wouldn't cheat against them and you wouldn't, um, have a relationship with their spouse. Thou shalt not kill. If you love somebody, you won't kill. Thou shalt not steal. If you love somebody, you won't you won't steal from them. Thou shalt not bear false witness. You won't lie uh, on somebody. Thou shalt not covet. You won't what want what belongs to them. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended or understood in this same namely. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And so some people will argue, say, say, well, you know, how can you love thy neighbor as yourself? Want what's best for them and not try to pull them down. That's <clears throat> loving your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Continue to read that because it's, it's more in there. It says, thou shall not kill. We may not literally go around taking people's literal lives, but we have to be careful with our tongue. Amen. Because we definitely... <clears throat> 
definitely can kill someone with our words. Mm -hmm. um, we can. There are people that seek to destroy people's relationships um, with words, hurtful words, because they have been hurt. Um, so we have to be careful with our mouths that we don't go around destroying someone's reputation. And as far as stealing, you know, it may not have necessarily have to be tangible, but are you the kind of friend that's always taking? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> You're never giving in the relationship. Children with parents, you know, are you always taking? Do you ever give your parents? anything Amen. whether it's a heartfelt thank you a heartfelt hug a heartfelt hey mom hey dad how are you mm -hmm. you know stop stealing yeah you know that's powerful what you're saying because yeah. a lot of times people don't realize because they're so busy trying to get yes that you know jesus came and, and jesus was a lover but jesus gave he mm -hmm. gave his life he came to to, to minister to to the world and a lot of times we kind of get caught up into all that we can get and then don't realize that God created us for other people. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the whole idea of understanding that we're for, for one another. And if you're in that vein of serving others, you're taking on that spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, that the Son of Man did not come to the earth for the world to minister to him, but he came to minister to us. And I always see that as God being a servant. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a servant God, a servant leader. Even though he's the most powerful, the most high God, he's still seeking what's best for us, but gives us choices. Mm -hmm. You know. And then it goes on to say, "Thou shall not bear false witness." Mm -hmm. Now that goes with um, one of our points about point number two: be weary of people who lie. Yeah, leery. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Be leery of people who lie. So don't you be a liar Amen. in the relationship. Yeah. Don't bear false witness. Tell the truth. Yes. Even if you have to admit your wrongdoing in a certain situation or your part in it, admit it. Yes. You know, don't don't bear false witness. Don't be a liar. And if you are connected to, to someone who has shown you that they are a liar, they are a liar. Yes. And lies are toxic. Yes. Yeah. I yes. mean, um, Think about it. From the garden, Satan lied to Eve, and she bit the lie, ate the lie, and destroyed, brought damnation to, yeah, yeah. to Adam. And so, and it brought damnation to to the world. And and a lot of the things that we see now is the result of a lie. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says about the devil is that he is a lie. He's the father of a lie. And when we lie, we are like the devil. Um, and, and we have to realize that hell was created for the devil and his angels. Um, and so if we are liars, we're going to get the reward of those who follow Satan. Um, and that's why we have to make sure that we're not, uh, toxicity can cause a person to lose their soul. You mm -hmm. know, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? You know, you lose your soul because you believe a lie or you perpetuate a lie. Mm -hmm. And our world right now, I mean, it's crucial to know the truth. Our world right now is filled with so much lies where people mean well, but they don't know the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's not enough to study God's word. We need to know what did God mean? And, and your pursuit of the truth of God, you know, the Bible said, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. You can only truly worship God by knowing the truth about God, knowing the truth about his commandments, knowing the truth about his love, knowing the truth about how he wants us to treat one another, knowing the truth about being that friend that, mm -hmm. that, that's willing to lay down your life for other people, to bring them to salvation, mm -hmm. to introduce them to Jesus. And the Bible said that love covers the multitude of sin, you know, and, and we can, we're going to get into this even deeper, but, but, but this, the way we, 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 we eradicate toxicity is through the power of love, mm -hmm. you know. So God is love. Amen. So we need to live our lives and make sure we're in God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. Point number three. Be watchful of people who need to talk to you every day. And overnight, you become their best friend. <laughs> they seem jealous of, or people who seem jealous of your other relationships. People who are controlling that way, you know, don't want you to spend time with 
your family, don't want you to spend time with this one or that one. They just want you all to themselves. Um, you may meet someone who, who needs a friend. That person may be needy, um, but be leery of opening yourself up really fast Amen. to an individual like that. Um, there will be people that God will put in your, in your life for a season that will come across your path who will be difficult to love. Yes. Who will be difficult to get along. And sometimes God uses those certain kinds of people to help train you, <laughs> to help groom you, to help sharpen you, to help get junk out of you. Amen. Amen. Because there may be individuals who tend to, you know, rub you the wrong way. Amen. <clears throat> but it's rubbing you the wrong way for the good. So we have to understand that sometimes God allows those situations in our life for growth purposes so that we can grow ourselves as well as helping other people. Be leery of every... Um, in certain situations, we always look for, you know, we want to be comfortable. But there are some situations that God allows us to truly be uncomfortable. Amen. Because he's working something within us. Don't always be so quick to say this is of the devil. Yes. Because it's uncomfortable. Um, it may be God working. And it may be God's way of working and dealing with you yourself. So be watchful. Be watchful of people who need to talk to you every day and overnight. Boy, y'all have become best friends. That's the way they think. Be real with them. Learn how to be upfront and honest. You know, don't lie to people. You know, if you can't be their friend right now because you may be in a season where you, you're busy with this, busy with that, you can't, you know, be there 100%. Be real. Tell yeah. them that. And, Don't lead people on. Yeah, and, 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 and a lot of times, one of the reasons why sometimes people are, are so needy of friends is because they don't know how to treat people. Right. They don't, they don't know how to set, they don't know boundaries that, mm -hmm. you know, it's, there's a time when you don't call people. You know, they, there's, they don't know. And sometimes you have to teach people, you know, that, look, you don't call somebody that early in the morning on certain days. You know, it, you know, well, I thought it was up. You know, no. Or that late at night. Or that late at night. You know. you know, there should be a cutoff time unless it's, it's an emergency. And everything is not an emergency. You know, what you saw funny on television, <clears> you know, <throat> is not, you know, an emergency. And so understanding that and being watchful of that, you know, you're still open for friendship, but you you're not um, you recognize that something wrong, mm -hmm. you know, out of kilter. Would you like to go to Proverbs? Yes. Proverbs twenty-seven. Actually, I want to go to Proverbs eleven. Okay, Proverbs eleven eleven says, "By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked." This is one of the things that you need to understand when people, when, when, when God sends a person or is sending you to a person, the words that come out of your mouth is, is a blessing. Mm -hmm. You bless them and they bless you. Um, I did a, a, a sermon that I talked about recently called um, Season for Reasons. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you have to realize is there, there may be some encounters that God will bring people into your life and you are to, to bless them and they're to bless you. You have to recognize what the purpose of the season is so that you can, um, so that you both are being a blessing to each other. So by the blessing of the upright, you need to make sure that you are the upright and recognize that if you're the person that's going to pull people into uprightness, that's what you should do. But it is, it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. There are some people that you can be going in the right direction and then they come into your life and the next thing you know, you're going in the wrong direction. Things that you had gotten away from, they'll pull you back into. And then verse 12 says, He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Yeah. You know, you, you have to, some people don't have the wisdom to know when to be quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, that they know how to hold their peace, even when they're angry. 
But notice what it says. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like some people don't like you and they don't know nothing about you. You know, they just, they're just there. But And then verse 13. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that, that's, that's powerful. Be mindful of you make sure that you have a faithful spirit, that you're able to hold people's stuff. You know, one of the things that people need is somebody that they can tell the deepest, darkest secret and it doesn't go any further. Yeah. That's... You know, that's a, 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 sometimes it's, it's, it's what our world is lacking is having somebody that, that you can trust, that you can tell when you're struggling and it won't be, become gossip. Mm -hmm. You know, let me tell you what someone's so struggling with. You know, you'd be, you wouldn't even imagine. You know, no, that, if they told you that in confidence, be that kind of person. Um, and then, again, be leery of those that are always trying to tell you other people junk. You know, say, say so and so. That should tell you right now what kind of friend mm -hmm. they are. When when some, when somebody they're telling you something that somebody else confided in them, or even if they heard it through the grapevine, and mm -hmm. they sh and they're quick to share it. You know, there's certain things that are not worth sharing. Did you hear what so and so did? I mean, the latest gossip, whether it's it's on the news, and you s be careful of people who so quick to tell the bad news about mm -hmm. stuff. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Because the old saying is true. A dog would carry a bone, but he will also, am I saying that right? I don't know. A dog will bring you a bone, but they also would carry one away. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So that means that person can't even be trusted with what you say. Amen. Because if they're telling somebody else's business, they'll tell your they business sure as well. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go back to the list. So. Point number four, they are quick to see the worst in everyone and often speak ill of others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. not being a good friend. That's not being a good friend. Good and person. we kind of just covered that. Just, mm -hmm. no, yeah. Uh huh. Continue. And then the next point says they don't trust anyone, especially spiritual leaders. Yeah. You know, when, when somebody starts off the conversation, I won't say start off the conversation. See, that's what I don't like about preachers. And don't you be that person either. You see, that's not, you know, because the enemy would like to convince us and try to convince the world that all uh, of God's servants and those that are in the church, all the churches, is filled with hypocrites. And, and a lot of times, that's so much of a lie. But so many people buy into that, you know, mm -hmm. that idea. Um, and so they don't trust people. They don't, you know, and, and, and there's so many other areas that people... Um, are fake and phony that people still keep going to. Mm -hmm. But but we have to make sure within ourselves that we're not those kind of people um, that that mistrust those that are spiritual leaders. Have there been in our season, in our lives, uh, spiritual leaders who've made mistakes? Yes. Mm -hmm. But that most of the time what's happening is the devil wants that to be spread so that, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Um, if God is using preachers and proclaimers to share the word of God and the devil's able to make it seem like all of them are, are misusing their power and authority are not doing what God has created them to do. If the devil could get that thought, that lie into the mind, if you don't trust preachers, what ends up happening, you don't get to hear what God is saying. Because most people, and here's the sad thing, even though God is speaking to all of us, most people don't hear God themselves. They, they ignore the voice of God. That's why God created proclaimers. That's why God have preachers, those that and teachers and pastors, so that they will speak the heart of God to the people of God. But if the enemy has, has gotten people so leery of those that they should trust because they have been offended, that goes into a whole nother subject. But because people have been offended, they have been healed of those offenses. And sometimes we have to be careful that we don't live our lives in a place of offense to where we, even now, <clears throat> I believe this, and I'm going to say this, I hope we can receive it. <coughs> I believe that the mass majority of police officers are good people. 
but because there has been, you know, quite a few who've made mistakes but have been politicized. One of the things that happen and the devil's good at is showing you all the bad. There's, there has been officers who have worn their uniform and have conducted their lives, for, you know, to, to be in a commendable way for years, and we've never heard about them. They, they, they've served their community, retired as policemen, and they had no scandals throughout the whole thing. Countless amount of officers. But let somebody do something contrary, that's going to make the news. Why? Because the devil is the... Pro you know, uh, he wants us to keep hearing bad news. Mm -hmm. He wants us to live in fear. And the Bible tells us that, that, that the just shall live by faith. And what the enemy wants us to do is to be afraid of the police, be afraid of their power, and to be afraid of being abused by them. We as children of God, regardless of what's happening in the news, we still have to live according to God's word. And the Bible tells us to honor those who, who where honor is due. Respect the police officers because the mass majority of them are good people who utilize their power and their authority the right way and will come to save your life, you know, and try to, to do what's right. Are there some that make mistakes? Yes, they are. But that, that compared to the amount that do right, it's more that's using that power the right way than using that power the wrong way. But the devil would like for us to believe just the opposite. That's right. And you have to remember where these lies come from and the purposes. Yeah. Think about how many children are coming up today who are not growing up respecting authority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can imagine what their lives are going to be like in 10, 20, 30 years if they keep up with that same mentality. Right. Not respecting authority. And I mean authority on all levels. In our society today, Kids are not. Right. In public, they don't ex respect the adults. They'll curse around adults. They'll do anything. You're not my mama. You're not my daddy. Kind of mentality. Right. And if they keep that up, what kind of world are we going to have? What kind of world would it be? And will these kids even last yeah. 50, 60, 80, 100 years? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that if you don't obey and honor you cutting your life short amen and a lot of our young people don't understand that and the word of god applies whether you are a believer or not god's word stands amen, amen. you know what's good about what you're just saying because even when we look at our home that sometimes mm -hmm. our, these children are coming from a toxic environment from home mm -hmm. where i mean the words that's coming out of mom and dad's mouth or grandmama's mouth are foul, mm -hmm. you know, and, and disrespectful. They disrespect each other. They disrespect the children. You know, um, it's so often you see see mamas cursing their children out. And I'm not talking about, you know, little slip curse words. I'm talking about the, they talk to their children like they're grown people. <laughs> Bring your little blankety blank self here. You know, and, and, and so you can imagine when those kids hit school and they talk to their teachers, they don't see anything wrong with using disrespectful words, calling teachers, you know, different words. I don't even want to say, but they don't have a problem with it because some of them call their mama those things. Mm -hmm. They call their daddies those things. And so when we have that kind of uh, world filled with disrespect um, and it's toxic, that toxic environment, one of the things about a toxic, poisonous kind of thing is that it spreads. Mm -hmm. It spreads. It spreads. And, and hatred spreads. Disrespect spreads. And where the, where the Bible tells us that we are supposed to honor, mm -hmm. you know, one another. We we forget to honor. We forget to to stand for what's right. And when we forget to do what the Bible says, we continually have a world filled with um, the corruption that comes from evil communication. Mm -hmm. And we have to kind of press in and say, "Not here, Lord. Not here. Not here." Uh, as for me and my house, as Joshua would say, we will serve the Lord. We're going to stand up for that which is right. And so, in this particular point. Um, understand that learning how to trust people in authority is important. Now, we understand that there are people who can't not be trusted. Amen. We understand that. That's why it's so important that we learn as Christians to learn how to live our lives being led 
by God's spirit. Yes. Amen. But the key in your relationships, you want people to be able to trust you, to be able to depend and count on you. And so if you're that kind of person, you also want that to be reciprocated, mm -hmm. you know, back to you. You trusting others, you're depending upon others, you're putting confidence in others. You want people to be able to be confident in you. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Point number six says, um, we're talking about avoiding toxic relationships. So point number six says, they get angry easily. Avoid people who get angry easily and feel like everyone is against them. Amen. The Bible says, don't be so quick to make friends with an angry person. Amen. Because anger can destroy things very quickly. Amen. Anger can destroy families. Um, anger can lead to uh, more corrupt things, more harsh things, more than you just getting mad. There are some people who cannot, haven't learned to control their anger to the point that they kill people. Amen. And then they cry, well, I didn't really mean to. But the anger led them to that. If you find yourself being angry, that's an area that you got to get help. You got to get control with your anger. Anger is not acceptable. Yeah. Um, in that form. Proverbs 21, 19, it says, it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious, contentious and angry woman. You know. Man too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm just reading what the words say. Hey, but, but think about it. Sometimes there's so many people that they can't control their anger. Yeah. They they, they have they, they, they fly off the mouth. You know, they 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 they, they are not growing in that. Um, the Bible tells us that soft words, you know, turn away wrath. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when somebody else is angry, you have to realize you have the power and the authority to de escalate a situation. Mm -hmm. Are you that person that even in the midst of somebody that's contentious and somebody that's contrary, that you have the ability to kind of step down and say, you know, I'm not going there with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not going, I'm, a, I'm going to take the high road. And, and it's sometimes taking a high road, you know, you might say, well, I don't, I don't let people walk over me. You know, I don't, it's not so much of that letting people walk over you, but you're making the decision that, that you want to do what God wants you to do. The Bible tells us to be angry and sin not, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so one of the things that, that we have to know is it's not a sin to be angry. It's, it's a sin when you allow your anger to make you do something that's sinful. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. You know, somebody could curse you out and you, it can anger you. You you, but when you return the curse word because they took you there, um, that's when you're going to need to repent and ask God to forgive you and to cleanse your heart because that means somebody was able to pull that out of you. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that there's some people. That they, I mean, the devil would send them so that they could take you down that road uh, of anger and belligerence that you don't want to go into. And also in that same chapter of Proverbs, it says, verse 22, an angry man stirreth up strife. Yeah. Strife is a spirit mm -hmm. and it's an evil spirit. And you have to learn how to recognize it when it creeps up into your relationships. Amen. But anger stirs it up. Anger can open the door to it in your family, into your relationships. Not learning how to deal with anger can, can cause that. And so we have to be very, very mindful of that. Also, um, in the Message Bible, it says, angry people stir up a lot of discord. And discord is one of those things that God hates. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, Proverbs chapter 6. Yes. And so it's true. Angry people stir up a lot of trouble. You know, because they, they're not content with them being angry with someone. Yeah, I need y'all to get angry with me. With me. I need you not to like them. And, <laughs> and you can see that sometimes. I mean, that's, I mean, it's childish. Yes. You know, again, that that's it, love causes a person to get to the place where they put away childish things. Mm -hmm. You know, when you grow into to the fullness of what God wants us to, when we grow into what God has called us to do, we, we learn how not to think like a child, you know, not to speak as a child, 
Um, we just put away some childish things. And so those are the things that God is asking us to, is to walk in the wisdom that, that belongs to us as children of God so that we can, you know, make the world a better place and not be, you know, um, con you know, cantankerous kind of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we also have to learn too that not to get angry when we're corrected. Oh, most, that's good. Most of us as human beings, we don't like to be told what's wrong. Yeah. We don't like to be told you're wrong. But you have to grow to learn how to take and accept correction and not find yourself being spiteful to the one who's bringing the correction. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 16. Okay. Okay. Verse 27. Proverbs 16, 27 says, An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and his lips there is a burning fire. A forward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. Mm -hmm. A violent man entice his neighbor, and leadeth him into a way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise for forward things, Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. Good team. The hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Yeah, that, I think God's word is, is really pointing to the fact that of, sometimes we think um, when a person allow someone to say things that are harsh and they hold their peace, we think that's weak. Mm -hmm. But to God, that's the mighty. You know, that's the mighty. When they say, you know, I'm going to let God fight my battles. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to hold my peace. We used to sing a song, let the Lord fight my battle. I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my victory. Victory shall be mine. But, but the truth of it is, it will be. If you hold your peace and you only speak what God wants you to speak, while others are saying what they feel. Yeah. 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 And there's some people that I just got to give them a piece of my mind. Nope. Keep that. Hold keep, it. Hold keep. it. Hold it. <clears throat> and you may have to cry to hold it because it's just bubbling up inside. I just got to, I just want to tell them. I just want to tell them. No, you got to go pray. Amen. And, and one of the things <laughs> that we have to be careful of too, we should not leave our house in the mornings without some devotion time of surrendering this our lives to the Lord to the Lord. The enemy is walking around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if we haven't submitted ourselves to God on a daily basis to meditate in his word, to get his thoughts of how he wants us to handle life, you know, because sometimes one of the things that we do um, is we'll have church on Sunday and then we don't see our Bible, <laughs> our scripture, until the following Sunday. We need to meditate in God's word. Even if you don't open it, you need to think of God's thoughts on a continually, continual basis to kind of keep your mind in that box of what God is thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love this verse 20. I'm just going all over the place in this, in this Proverbs. Verse 24 of this same um, proverb says, kind words are like honey, enjoyable and beautiful. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Yeah. Does that, describe, words. does that describe who you are as a friend? You know, that's that's what we're we're trying because the as we th the first part of being of getting rid of toxic um, is to being out of a toxic relationship is for you not to be a toxic portion mm -hmm. of the relationship you know um you blessed are the peacemakers you know so so by you being a peacemaker even in a toxic situation you, your peace just like god's peace because it is god's peace comes into a situation and it shifts it mm -hmm. you know it, it it can be a bad situation but because of the way you're utilizing the wisdom of god you handle it through to the in a way that it glorifies god mm -hmm. And then the last point, because we, we do need to close, got to watch our time, says they ask people 
who ask you to compromise on your values. They're, they can be toxic. Always wanting you to compromise your values. Your close friends must be a person of faith, a people of faith. The just shall live by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah, it, and I think that's that's something that we have to embrace, mm -hmm. that, that we have to live by faith, not by fear. We're living in a time where if you watch the news for, for about 10 minutes, you can be afraid. Mm -hmm. Unless you go back and say, you know, I know, God, you got this. That's horrible what's happened. But God, I thank you. And I know you have that. And I know you have me. And the same thing with, with our families and with our children. There are things that can come up and things that can happen that all of a sudden you, it can make you throw away your faith. And, and it's other people, they, they can be filled with doubt and unbelief. Yeah, but you, the doctor said yeah, but does the Dr. Trump what God says? God, we have to go to be able to grab hold to faith in God, even in, uh, I mean, some of the most difficult times in life. You know what, God, I trust you. I don't know how you're going to do this. I don't know how you're going to bring this out, but I trust you because you're good. I want you to think about this. What does a toxic relationship look like? I want you to think about these points. I'm not going to expound on them but just think about them lack of support in other words you don't feel like they have your back that's a that's a flag toxic communication you know not treating people with kindness and we've hit on that a person that's jealous jealousy can kill a relationship controlling behaviors um not wanting you to be um People who get overly upset when you don't immediately answer their texts or their calls. I mean, overly, you know, they just, they get all bent out of shape because you wouldn't, you couldn't be found. They, you didn't answer the telephone. You know, those are signs of controlling behavior and maybe even signs of abuse later on if those controlling behaviors continue. Um, you're, you're around people who are full of resentment. Over time, frustration or resentment can build up. Something really little can all, always become very big if it's not dealt with. Holding grudges, being resentful, dishonesty, we hit on that, lying. Um, there's a pattern of disrespect in your relationship. That's a red flag that it's toxic. Negative financial behavior. Hmm. Husband spent up all the money, wife spent up all the money, no communication, nobody talking to each other. I buy what I want, I do what I want. That's disrespect, even when it comes down to the finances. Amen. So that's a red flag. Constant stress. Constant stress. Sometimes you don't even want to go home <laughs> because of what you may face. Amen. Constant stress. Ignoring your needs. That's a that's a flag of toxicity. Your needs are you feel like the others are not, they're getting their needs met. You may be busy meeting their needs, but your needs aren't being met or heard. Lost relationships. You stop spending time together as a family. You stop doing things together. You begin to, to drift apart. Um, and you always got to walk on eggshells around these individuals. Those are signs that your relationship is toxic or that it's heading into that toxicity. But relationships can be fixed. They can be helped. We got to be willing to invest in our relationships. We have to be willing to accept responsibility in our relationships. We have to stop shifting blame. Mm -hmm. Even if, if you have to go to counseling, you know, but you're not going to counseling to just get your side heard or to make the other person look bad or feel bad. But no, you, you're not going to shift blame anymore. You're accepting responsibility. And then you got to be open to outside help because there's some things that is beyond your ability to deal with yourself. You need a professional yeah. to help you in your relationships. Let's go to finish up with Proverbs chapter 13. Mm -hmm. um, just dealing with walking with wise. And that goes back to, to counseling. You know, the Bible, we talk, mentioned the scripture says, um, in a multitude of counsel, there is safety. Um, 
but you want counsel from the wise. Mm-hmm. You don't want because sometimes people say, "Well, I talk, I talk to people." You know, he told me, you know, you, you want somebody that that has a history of being able to to have a good relationship, healthy relationship themselves, as well as someone that have learned from their mistakes that you can learn from their mistakes as well. But Proverbs chapter 13, let's start at verse 13 and kind of go down. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is help. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. And see, that's the thing. Reproof really is a word that means correction. We all at times, and it's so much more than this, we can just, just deal with this all in itself. But we need correction, but we need correction from people who have spent time with God and time with knowledge so that they're giving you healthy advice, you know, concerning your relationships and concerning how you deal with it. Continue to read. The, the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is admonition to fools to depart from evil. Abomination. Abomination, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. To fools to depart from evil. Verse 20, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Now, I want to kind of come, just look at the difference between verse 19 and 20. He, the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. There are some people who can't move forward and, and accomplish anything because they live in foolishness. They're always filled with foolishness. They're, they wake up with foolishness on their mind. They talk about foolishness. It's always about stuff that really doesn't bring prosperity or blessing. They're just filled with foolishness. But then it says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. A lot of times the destruction that, uh, or what brings a person down is the people that they are associated with, or the, time, the people that they spend quality time with it. Verse 21. Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. Mm -hmm. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Yeah. Again, the just shall live by faith. There are certain things that God would do for those that he can trust. And when we live in that realm of allowing God to trust us and we're seeking knowledge, be a pursuer of godly knowledge, of godly wisdom. Talk to people who who are who are good at life, you know, and that know how to communicate. You know, you don't want to be around people that are always angry, but people who have a calm demeanor about themselves and know how to communicate the wisdom of God because they know the wisdom of God. This book, the Bible, is filled with wisdom. But it's also filled with the decisions of foolish people. You can learn from the decisions of men like King Saul, who allowed sin and narcissistic, you know, attitude to take over his life and to destroy him. And he walked away from wisdom. And when God had exalted him to a high place and a high position, because he became jealous of David, and that's a whole nother story. But but even in looking at that. You can see how, how allowing yourself to be filled with toxic attitudes can, can take you from, from being a person of honor to being a, place, a person of a, that, that lives a foolish life and loses the blessings and the favor of the Almighty God. Amen? Amen. So we hope that this has been a blessing to you, avoiding toxic relationships. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word tonight. Help us all. Help us all to be better and to do better. Lord, we understand that's why we need to be born again. Yes. We're all born into sin. We all have the propensity to be evil and to do evil. God, we need a savior. And we thank you for giving us a savior through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. 
Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, God. So we don't have to live in toxicity. We don't have to be people who contribute to toxic relationships because of Jesus. So help us as your people, Lord, to learn how to live like you want us to live. Give us of your spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us, to correct us, to help us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, bless our homes. Bless all of our relationships. Heal our marriages. Heal our relationship. Heal our relationship with our children. Heal, Father. Save our unsaved friends, our unsaved loved ones. And God, those who need friends, send them good, godly friends, good, yes. godly companions yes. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Thank, you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for doing it, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to live this life and do this life alone, that you're with us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, we never want to um, end our session without giving you the opportunity to receive the Lord as your Savior or just to rededicate your heart, your mind to the Lord. Maybe you've fallen. Maybe you you kind of backslid. Or maybe you just know that you need to, to repent of some foolish, uh, toxic activities and you need to ask God to cleanse you and Jesus is standing here and available at the door of your heart and he's knocking and he wants you to open that door so he can come in and wash you clean say this with me say father God father God in the wonderful name of Jesus in the wonderful name of Jesus deliver me deliver me from everything that's toxic from everything that's toxic anything in my heart anything that's in my heart that's not like you that's not like you wash it away wash it away I believe in the power of the blood I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary that was shed on Calvary before he went into the tomb before he went into the tomb and then when he was raised then when he was raised with all power with all power to be our Savior to be our Savior I open my heart I open my heart and ask you Jesus and ask you Jesus save me Save me, Lord. Save me from evil. Save me from evil. Save me from a toxic attitude. Save me from a toxic attitude. In this toxic world. In this toxic world. Let your glory. Let your glory. Fill my heart. Fill my heart. Fill me with the Spirit. Fill me with the Spirit. Your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit. Renew my mind. Renew my mind. Correct my mind. Correct my mind. That I would think like you want me to that think. That I would think like you want me to think. And be what you want me to be. And be what you want me to be. Save me. Save me, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm your child. I am your child. I will live for you. I will live for you. I will glorify you. I will glorify you. With every breath I take. With every breath I take. In Jesus' In name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. If you desire to meet with us on Sunday, um, we need to for you to RSVP. Just text Bishop and say I'm coming Sunday so that we can know about the numbers, which still trying to follow CDC guidelines. So um, let us know, and we'll be glad to see you. We're still wearing our mask. Uh, we're still trying our best to practice social distance. So if you desire to come, just text Bishop and say, I would like to come Sunday, and we will get back with you. Yeah. God bless you. Amen. Thank you.